hello students welcome to the class so in the previous class we have discussed few questions on states of matter now proceeding to the next set of questions 26th question the temperature of a gas is raised from 27 degree celsius to 927 degree celsius the root mean square speed of a gas that means they have asked us rms root mean square velocity right so how do we do this root mean square velocity we know the formula right so they have given us what temperature the temperature is raised from 27 degree celsius so 27 degree celsius it is raised to what it is raised to 927 degree celsius correct degree celsius has to be converted to kelvin add 273 so 27 plus 273 comes out to 300 sorry 300 kelvin and 927 plus 320 273 comes out to 1200 kelvin so these are the two temperatures i have converted them now we know that root mean square velocity or root mean square speed that is denoted as v r m s correct it is it is directly proportional to what it is directly proportional to temperature it is directly proportional to temperature therefore root mean square velocity of a gas when temperature is raised what will happen it will also increase yes so let us see how it will increase therefore i can write it as root of t1 up sorry root of t2 upon t1 yes so what do we get root of 1200 upon it is 300 so 3 ones are 3 fives are Three ones are three, three two's are six, three nine, three four's are twelve. So it is root four hundred is nothing but root four is nothing but two. So how many times it has raised? It has raised two times. Is that right? Therefore, which is the correct option? Yes, the correct option is option D. It gets doubled. It gets doubled. Next question: The ratio among most probable velocity, mean velocity, and root mean square velocity is given by. Okay. so see here we know all the formula of all the velocities okay so let me discuss most probable velocity most probable velocity i will represent it as v mp which means most probable velocity okay it is equal to what it is equal to root of 2 rt upon m root of 2 rt upon m m this is most probable velocity what is the formula for mean velocity the formula for mean velocity is it is represented as v bar it is equal to root of 8 rt upon pi m 8 rt upon pi m then what is the formula for root mean square velocity root mean square velocity yes i will represent it as v rms yes so what is the formula the formula is root of 3 rt 3 rt upon m so what they have asked they have asked me the ratio of most probable velocity v mp is to they have asked the ratio of mean velocity v bar is to root mean square velocity root mean square velocity so will be equal to what it will be equal to root of 2 rt upon m 2 rt upon m is to root of 8 rt upon pi m 8 rt upon pi m is to root of 3 rt upon m 3 rt upon m solve it out rt upon m is common for all the factors therefore it comes out to root 2 is to root 8 by pi is to root 3 yes or no rt by m is common therefore i will cancel it out so i will get this answer so correct answer is root 2 is to root 8 by pi i am sorry 8 by pi is to root 3 this is the correct option so let us see which option holds true for this that will be our correct option root uh, 2 is to root 8 by pi is to root 3 so third option d is the correct option d is the correct option next question the root mean square velocity 
at stp standard temperature and pressure for gases h2o n2o2 and hbr are in the order okay fine so root mean square velocity they have said so formula for root mean square velocity is root of 3 rt by m or i can also write it as root of 3 pv by m because our pv is equal to rt by ideal gas equation yes and we know that what is pv equal to pv is equal to 1 by 3 m n v square and what is v square that is root mean square velocity that is equal to 1 by 3 m v square because yeah what is gases they have taken one mole of gases let us consider okay so m capital m i will write v square is that right m into n or u is uh, v is what this is root mean square velocity root of 3 rt by m at stp at stp i know that the root mean square velocity is directly proportional to temperature and it is inversely proportional to molecular root of molecular mass and the molecular masses i know they have given which gases h2 n2 o2 hbr correct so root mean square velocity is inversely proportional to molecular mass so it is inversely proportional what is the molecular mass of hydrogen 2 molecular mass of nitrogen it is 14 into 2 28 molecular mass of oxygen 32 16 2s are 32 hbr it will become to 81 so as molecular mass increases root mean square velocity decreases and as molecular mass decreases root mean square velocity increases so which will have least value which is having highest molecular mass so it is hbr is less than oxygen which is less than nitrogen which is less than hydrogen understood so this is the correct order now let us see which satisfies our order okay uh, option b so hbr o2 n2 and h2 so this will satisfy our order next question root mean square velocity of a gas molecule is proportional to yes it is proportional to i will do it here only see we know that pv is equal to what just now we have seen 1 by 3 m capital n v square that is root mean square velocity yes so v stands for root mean square velocity v square is equal to what v is equal to what v is equal to root of 3 rt upon m and v square is equal to what it will be 3 rt by m because root goes correct therefore i can say v is equal to what it is inversely proportional to root of m it is inversely proportional to root of m so which is the correct option the correct option is inversely proportional 1 by 2 minus root of m correct so this is the correct option hope you understood understood okay next question the energy absorbed by each molecule the energy absorbed by each molecule a2 of a substance of a substance is 4.4 into 10 raise to minus 19 joules and bond energy per molecule is 4.0 into 10 raise to minus 19 joules the kinetic energy of the molecule per atom will be see what is given there is a molecule a2 the atomic molecule the energy absorbed by each molecule what is the energy absorbed the energy absorbed by each molecule okay by each molecule is equal to how much they have said they have said it is equal to 4.4 into 10 raise to minus 19 joules correct further what they have said bond energy means what the energy required to break the bond so energy required to break bond to break the bond is how much they have said bond energy is 4.0 into 10 raise to minus 19 joules is that right okay so what they have asked the kinetic energy per molecule 
So my remaining energy, see, this much energy is used to break the bonds. This much energy is actually absorbed. That molecule A two, it has absorbed four point four into ten to minus nineteen joules of energy, and out of that much energy, it is using four point zero into ten to minus nineteen joules to break the bond. That means, can I say remaining energy? Remaining energy to get converted to kinetic energy. To kinetic energy, correct? Yes. Therefore, can I write it like this? Equal to four point four into ten raised to minus nineteen minus four point zero into ten raised to minus nineteen. The powers of the exponents are same, so I can. Um, do the subtraction. Subtraction. It will be zero point four into ten raised to minus nineteen joules per molecule. Per molecule. What they have asked? The kinetic energy of the molecule per atom. They have asked. Correct. So a molecule is made up of. They have said molecule is A two. It is made up of two atoms, A and A. Therefore, this is per molecule. Therefore, I can say kinetic energy per atom. Per atom will be what divided by two. That will be zero point two into ten raised to minus nineteen joules. Correct? Is that right? Divided by two because there are two atoms. It is a diatomic molecule. Or I can write it as two into ten raised to minus twenty joules. Shifting the decimal point to the right, minus one, it becomes minus twenty. So. Which our option contains that will be marked out. Is that right? I hope you have understood it. So, which is the correct option? Two into ten raised to minus twenty joules. So, option D is the correct option. Okay. Next question: If a gas expands at constant temperature, it indicates that. What does it indicate? It is expanding at constant temperature. So options are kinetic energy of the molecules remains same, number of the molecules of gas increases, kinetic energy of the molecules decreases, pressure of the gas increases. So let us see what does it indicate. So what they have said, if a gas expands at constant temperature, okay. See gas at constant temperature. At constant temperature, gas expands. One thing we can understand from this: volume is increasing. Okay. At constant temperature, gas is expanding means what? The average kinetic energy of one molecule of an ideal gas, of one molecule of an ideal gas, of an ideal gas is given by E. T is equal to is equal to kinetic energy upon Avogadro number. Okay, kinetic energy for an ideal gas it is three by two R T upon N A, or I can write it as three by two K T, where K will be what? It is a Boltzmann constant. So K is equal to R by N A because these are both constants. So R by N A. Okay, from this expression, I can come to the conclusion that this is a constant. So E T average kinetic energy is directly proportional to what? It is directly proportional to temperature. So at constant temperature, what will happen to the if the gas expands? If the gas expands at constant temperature, the kinetic energy of molecules, the kinetic energy of the molecules remains same. Remains same because kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature, and they have said at constant temperature, at constant temperature, is that right? So correct option is what? Kinetic energy of the molecules remains same. It remains same. Next question: Average molar kinetic energy of carbon monoxide and nitrogen at same temperature is? At same temperature is the average. Molar kinetic energy of carbon monoxide and N two at same temperature. Just now we have seen the equation. What equation we have seen? Kinetic energy is equal to three by two R T. 
करेक्ट एंड दिस इज फॉर वन मोल ऑफ गैस ओके फॉर वन मोल ऑफ गैस एज टेम्परेचर आर सेम सो दे हैव सेट एट सेम टेम्परेचर एज टेम्परेचर इज सेम kinetic energy is what it is independent kinetic energy just now we have seen see this equation only you see it is there is no molecular mass here correct so i can say kinetic energy is independent it is independent of what molecular mass because kinetic energy depends only on temperature and temperature is same so kinetic energy is independent of molecular mass whether you take carbon monoxide nitrogen you take any gas it is independent of the molecular mass therefore we can say kinetic energy of co is equal to kinetic energy of n2 or if i consider carbon monoxide as gas 1 and nitrogen as gas 2 we can write it as kinetic energy of gas 1 is equal to kinetic energy of gas 2 understood so from this equation only we come to the conclusion what we understand kinetic energy in c 3 by 2 r is a constant so remove the constant it will come to kinetic energy is directly proportional to t understanding and it is dependent only on temperature and they are saying temperature is same and kinetic energy there is no point of molecular mass see there is no point of molecular mass therefore since it is independent of molecular mass it is same for both the gases it is same for both the gases is that right okay next question the average kinetic energy of an ideal gas per molecule in si units at 25 degrees celsius will be okay the question is they have asked average kinetic energy temperature they have given out to what they have given temperature as 25 degrees celsius 25 convert it to kelvin it comes to 25 plus 273 it is 298 kelvin okay temperature so they have said average kinetic energy kinetic energy of molecule so i have average kinetic energy per molecule i can say per molecule is equal to what it is 3rt by na 3rt by na so 3 into what is the value of r 8.314 then into temperature is 298 divided by avogadro number 6.0 So three RT three by two RT NA yes so two into six point zero two two into ten raised to twenty three solve it out when you solve it out you will get the answer six point one seven into ten raised to minus twenty one joules six point one seven into ten raised to minus twenty one joules yes so let us see which option holds good for this. So the option is six point one seven into ten raised to minus twenty one joules. So it is option D, which is correct. Option D, which is correct. Okay, fine. Next question: At STP (standard temperature and pressure), zero point five zero moles of H two gas and one point zero moles of helium gas. What what do we understand from this? Okay, let us understand here. See at STP zero point five zero moles of H two and one point zero moles of H E gas. So they have taken two gases and they have given us the volumes. Yes, we know that. What is average kinetic energy? They have question on kinetic energies, right? Okay. So option A is they have equal average kinetic energies. Option B is have equal molecular speeds, occupy equal volumes. And have equal effusion rates. Okay, let us see which is correct. Average kinetic energy depends on what? Average kinetic energy depends on temperature. Is it right? Because three by two R T. Yes or no? It depends on temperature. This is constant, so I will write K E is directly proportional to temperature. So since it depends on temperature, how much ever uh, uh, amount you take or whatever gas you take, it is independent of that. So it is dependent only on temperature. So can I say kinetic energies will be same? Yes. So first option itself is the right option. So what is the first option? They have equal kinetic energies. That is the correct option. They have equal kinetic energies. Is that right? 
Yes, because average kinetic energy, you know the formula. Ke is equal to 3 by 2 RT. Yes, okay. Next question. Internal energy for internal energy and pressure of a gas per unit volume are related to internal energy and pressure. Okay, so what is uh, equation C? We know this equation, right? Uh, in, we have seen ex explanation for uh, uh, kinetic theory of molecules there we have seen. PV is equal to what? It is equal to 1 by 3 m n v square, where v is root mean square velocity. Or I can write it as 1 by 3 m into n, mass into number of moles as molar mass into v square. I can write it like this also. Okay. You can represent it like this. So what you do is you represent. So I will write here in this equation, it will be 2 by 3. Energy equation is what? Energy equation is 1 by 2 m v square. Substitute this. So I can write here 2 by 3 into 1 by 2 m v square. 2 by 3 into 1 by 2 m v square. And that is nothing but 2 by 3 half m v square is what? Half m v square is energy. Half m v square is energy. Yes. So, PV is equal to 2 by 3 into E. So, what is P related to? So, if I say volume is 1 unit, I can say P is equal to 2 by 3 into E per unit volume. Per unit volume. So, this is the correct relation. So, what is the relation given? The relation given is P is equal to 2 by 3 into E. Option A is the correct option. Option A is the correct option. Next question. A closed flask contains water in all its three states, solid, liquid and vapor at 0 degree Celsius. In this situation, the average kinetic energy of the water molecules will be. So it is present in solid, liquid and vapors at 0 degree Celsius. So what will be the situation? Option A, the greatest in all the three states, the greatest in vapor state, the greatest in liquid state, the greatest in solid state. So they have asked what? Average kinetic velocity, energy. Average kinetic energy means what? Kinetic energy is half mv square. It is nothing but velocity. Therefore, I can say velocity and hence average kinetic energy of water molecules is make maximum where? Where kinetic energy is more? Yes, I need not say this. You already know. In case of solids, they are packed very strongly. In case of liquids, they are slowly free. Whereas in case of gases, they are very far. So if we say here, there is only vibration motion. Here they have certain motion, but it is less than gases. Here the kinetic energy of the molecules is high. Correct? Therefore, average kinetic energy means what? It is nothing but velocity only. So I can say velocity and therefore average kinetic energy of the water molecules will be greatest in what? It will be greatest in vapor state. It will be greatest in vapor state. Is that right? Because we know kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. Okay. Next question, which is not true in case of an ideal gas. It cannot be converted into liquid. Not true. Yes, this is true. It cannot be converted into liquid. Ideal gas is a hypothetical uh, concept. There is no interaction between the molecules. Yes, ideal gas says that there is no interaction. Kinetic molecular theory of ideal gases was given to say that there is no perfectly no interaction between the gaseous molecules. There is no attraction between the molecules. That was proved to be wrong. That's the reason our real gases show the deviation from ideal behavior. Yes or no? Van der Waal had given it. All the molecules of gases move with same speed. Is it right? No. Molecules in an ideal gas, they move with different speeds. Tell me why do they move with different speeds? Due to the collisions between the particles, their speed will change. When the molecules collide, their speed changes. So molecules of gas, all the molecules of gas move with same speed is a wrong uh, concept. Because in ideal gases, they move at different speeds. Why do they move with different speeds? Because of the collisions between the particles, their speeds changes. 
at a given temperature pv is proportional to amount of gas yes that is also correct that is also correct so which is not true it is option c all the molecules of the gas move with the same speed that is not true because they have different speeds due to the collisions between the particles next question a gas at 350 kelvin and 15 bar pressure has molar volume of 20 percent smaller than that for an ideal gas under the same conditions so 20 percent smaller than that for an ideal gas under the same conditions the correct option about the gas and its compressibility factor is this compress z stands for compressibility factor less less than 1 and repulsive forces are dominant greater than 1 and attractive forces are dominant greater than 1 repulsive forces are dominant less than 1 attractive forces are dominant okay let us see how we can solve this see what they have said they have said that 350 kelvin temperature and 15 bar pressure okay has molar volume 20 percent smaller than that for an ideal gas so volume of ideal gas if i say yes it is equal to let me say it is equal to v then volume of real gas it will be equal to what it will be equal to 20 percent less so it can we can i say v minus 0.2 into v 20 percent less 20 by 100 0.2 Correct. That is equal to what? That will be equal to V common one minus zero point two, and that is nothing but zero point eight V. Will you get this volume? Correct. Okay. Z is equal to what? P V by N R T. So V is there on the top. Therefore, I can write volume of real gas upon volume of ideal gas. Is that right? So volume of real gas is what? Zero point eight V. Upon volume of ideal gases, V V V gets cancelled. So Z is equal to what? It is zero point eight. That means Z is less than one. Yes. Why Z is less than one? Because if you see real, if you see this con, this particular major, observe this particular thing. I can write this equation like this also. V real is equal to zero point eight into V ideal. Getting V of ideal. that means the attractive forces are more dominant yes so only multiply by this factor you will get the volume of real gas you will get the volume of real gas therefore we say attractive forces are dominant attractive forces are dominant is that clear attractive forces are dominant i hope this concept is understood so just find the compressibility factor just find the compressibility factor okay fine next question so the correct option is z is less than 1 and attractive forces are dominant z is less than 1 and attractive forces are dominant correct okay next a gas such as carbon monoxide would be most likely to obey ideal gas law at okay it would more to to obey what low temperatures and high pressures high temperatures and high pressures low temperatures and low pressures high temperatures and low pressures so a gas such as carbon monoxide would be most likely to obey the ideal gas see real gases they show ideal behavior and we know forget about real gases showing ideal behavior we know the definition of real gases what we know we say the definition of real gas as real gases do not obey ideal gas equation at all conditions of temperature and pressure this is one way of representing or real gases obey the ideal gas equation at extremely high temperatures and low pressures right so carbon monoxide is a real gas real gases show ideal behavior at high temperatures and very low pressures so option d is the correct option option b is the correct option is that right okay next question maximum deviation from ideal gas is expected from maximum deviation from ideal gas is expected from when we were discussing deviation from ideal behavior we talked about we spoke about the polarity yes 
where there is more polarity there will be more attractive forces between the molecules and there will be maximum deviation so look at the options and which is polar you just see forget uh, ch4 h2 n2 these are non polar molecules and the only polar molecule is nh3 so nh3 being a polar molecule it will have more attractive forces between ammonia molecules therefore it will show maximum deviation because according to our kinetic molecular theory of gases what does it say it says that there is no attractive forces between the molecules yes and we can expect this in a real gases also when the attractive forces are less where the attractive forces will be there is where there is non polar molecules so only when we are discussing about uh, deviation of real gas from ideal behavior we discussed that h2 n2 o2 the helium they are all non polar molecules they show positive deviation whereas ch4 carbon dioxide carbon monoxide nh3 they all show negative deviation that is first the product of pv decreases reaches a certain minimum point and then it increases is that right so ammonia here in this case maximum deviation from ideal gas is expected for ammonia nh3 nh3 being a polar molecule more attractive forces between the nh3 molecules is that right next question for real gases van der waals equation is written as p plus a n square by v square into v minus nb is equal to nrt where a and b are called what van der waals constants two sets of gases are o2 co2 he and helium ch4 o2 and h2 so these are the two different sets of gases they have given the gases given in set 1 in the increasing order of b and the gases given in set 2 in the decreasing order of a are arranged below select the correct order from the following okay so what they have said van der waals equation they have considered so van der waals equation is p plus a n square by v square into v minus n b is equal to n r t this is van der waals equation okay so van der waals gas constant a yes this is a and b are constants it represents what it represents the inter molecular forces of attraction this is actually a very beautiful question framed very beautifully yeah so many things we can understand from this question so intermolecular force of attraction of the gaseous molecules and van der waals constant b tells us what it tells us about the it represents effective size of the molecules effective size of the molecules so what they have asked the gas is given in set 1 in the increasing order you want and set 2 in the decreasing order set 1 in the increasing order means where intermolecular forces of attraction are less options given are which are the options set 1 set 1 the options are o2 co2 h2 and he and set 2 options are ch4 o2 h2 so increasing order first set you arrange them so how do you arrange them intermolecular force of attraction in the increasing order they have said okay okay the gases given in set 1 in increasing order of b yes b means what effective size of the molecules correct so effective size when i consider which comes first h2 is having least then comes he then comes o2 and then comes co2 correct this is a correct option then the gases given in set 2 in the decreasing order of a decreasing order that means which is having maximum intermolecular force of attraction see carbon o2 is purely o2 and h2 are purely diatomic homonuclear molecules but ch4 is a heteronuclear molecule so here the intermolecular attractions are more then comes what o2 because bond order is less bond order is 2 bond energy will be more so they will be held strongly then comes h2 is that right so which will give the correct option that is the correct answer so which is the correct option h2 he o2 co2 so option c ch4 o2 and h2 yes option c is the correct option option c is the correct option
okay moving to the next question moving to the next question van der waals real gas acts as an ideal gas at which conditions van der waals real gas acts as an ideal gas at which conditions okay real gas acts as an ideal gas at which conditions at see we know that according to van der waals equation at low pressure at low pressure and high temperature at low pressure and high temperature van der waals real gas acts as ideal gas and observe to obey pv is equal to nrt okay pv is equal to nrt what happens at very low pressure when the gas volume is quite large the space occupied by the molecules themselves becomes negligible at very low pressure at very low pressure when gas volume is quite large yes so pressure is very low means what volume will be too much when volume is too much the volume occupied by individual gas becomes negligible and that is uh, correct with kinetic theory of gases correct and because the molecules are then far apart the forces of mutual attraction also becomes less it becomes feeble understanding the real gas would satisfy the postulates of kinetic molecular theory of gases understanding why is it so because at very low pressure volume is very large so when volume is large for a gas imagine the volume occupied by an individual molecule becomes very less as said by kinetic molecular theory of gases correct second point since the volume is very large the molecules are very far away from each other so when they are very far away from each other the new force of attraction will be very weak so almost negligible you can say so there will be no forces of intermolecular forces of attraction intermolecular forces of attraction is that right and that also is obeyed by kinetic molecular theory of gases further as temperature increases as temperature increases what will happen the volume of the gas also increases because v is directly proportional to t which law it is charles law fine so volume of the gas increases and we can consider p plus n a square sorry n square a by v square term as p and at low pressure this is at high temperature at low pressure what we can say v minus n b can be taken as v therefore the equation becomes what it becomes pv plus pv is equal to nrt this van der waals equation becomes pv is equal to nrt and that is what ideal gas equation so what what conditions at very high temperature and very low pressure very high temperature and very low pressure is that right okay when is a deviation more in the behavior of a gas from ideal gas equation pv is equal to nrt when deviation is more opposite of this at high temperature and low pressure the real gas is behaving like ideal gas so real gas is behaving like ideal gas it is behaving like ideal gas means what it is a, uh, obeying the equation pv is equal to nrt when a deviation is more when it is opposite that means the temperature should be how it should be very low and pressure should be very high yes or no at very low temperature and very high pressure there is large deviation from ideal behavior so at low temperature and very high pressure the deviation of a real gas from ideal behavior is maximum it is maximum okay next question a gas is said to behave like an ideal gas when the relation pv by t equal to constant when do you expect a real gas to behave like an ideal gas same question okay let me write it here what are the what are the conditions at high temperature and low pressure yes at high temperature and low pressure i can say in van der waals equation the effect of a by v square and b is negligible yes 
the effect of A by V square in pressure correction and B in volume correction is negligible. Therefore, in that case, PV is equal to RT or PV upon RT is equal to what? One. And what is this one? One is nothing but compressibility factor. One is nothing but Z, compressibility factor. And if Z is equal to one, the real gas shows the ideal behavior. It shows the ideal behavior. Is that right? So which is the correct option? When the temperature is low? No. When both temperature and pressure are low? No. When both temperature and pressure are high? No. When temperature is high and pressure is low. You understood why? So when temperature is high and pressure is low, the pressure correction A square by A by V square and the volume correction B become negligible. At that time, PV will be equal to RT or I can write PV by RT is equal to 1. And what is 1? Compressibility factor that is Z. So Z becomes equal to 1 means what? Z is equal to 1 for ideal gases. And this is possible when the temperature is high and the pressure is low. When the temperature is high and pressure is low. Next question. In Van der Waals equation of state for a non-ideal gas, the term that accounts for intermolecular forces is? The term that accounts for intermolecular forces. See, I have, I have explained it when I was explaining Van der Waals equation also. The Van der Waals equation is correction in pressure term P plus A N square by V square into V minus NB pressure uh, volume correction is equal to NRT, correct? If it is one mole, so here P plus A by V square, if I consider one mole, this is the equation. This equation represents what? It represents the intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces. Yes. And V minus B represents what? It represents the correct volume. That is nothing but size correction. Correct volume means what? It tells us about the effective size. Yes. So what question is asked? The term that accounts for intermolecular forces is what? It is P plus A by V square. It is P plus A by V square. So correct option is option C. It is option C. Given Van der Waals constants for ammonia, NH3, hydrogen gas, H2, oxygen gas, O2, and carbon dioxide are respectively 4.17, 0 0.244, 1.36, and 3.59. Which one of the following gases is most easily liquefied? So based on Van der Waals constants. Yes. See, Van der Waals constants, there are A and B. As we discussed, A signifies the intermolecular force of attraction between the particles of the gas. And B signifies what? B signifies the size of the uh, uh, molecules. Okay. Here they have given us Van der Waals constants, so and so. These are nothing but intermolecular force of attraction. So, Van der Waals constant A signifies the intermolecular force of attraction between the particles of the gas. Higher the value of A, easier will be the liquefaction of gases. Higher the value of A, so I will write it here, higher the value of A, higher the value of A, easier will be, easier will be liquefaction easier will be liquefaction. Yes, easier will be the liquefaction. So where the value of A is highest, it is 4.17. So 4.17 comes first. This is most easily liquefiable. Then comes 3.59. Then comes 1.36. And then comes 0 0.244. So 4.17 is for ammonia. So this is most easily liquefiable. 3.59 is for carbon dioxide, second most liquefiable gas, then 1.36 is for oxygen, and last one is H2. Understanding? So higher the value of Van der Waals constant A, easier will be the reflect, uh, liquefaction of the gas. And it is, correct option is option ammonia. It is A. Next question. An ideal gas obeying kinetic theory of gases cannot be liquefied. Why? 
Why cannot you liquefy an ideal gas which obeys kinetic theory of gases? Option A, it solidifies before becoming a liquid. Option B, forces acting between its molecules are negligible. Option C, its critical temperature is above zero degrees. Option D, its molecules are relatively small in size. See, is it because it solidifies before becoming a liquid? No, that is not the case. Here we are discussing about liquefaction. We are not talking about sublimation. Forces acting between its molecules are negligible. Yes, kinetic theory. So gas can only be liquefied if some forces of attraction are acting in its molecules. According to kinetic theory, an ideal gas doesn't have any forces of attraction, yes or no, in its molecules. Therefore, it cannot be liquefied. But if you want to liquefy gases, what there should be when you increase the pressure, volume decreases, we say, because the molecules will come closer, there will be forces of attraction. So we say a gas can only be liquefied if and if only there are some forces of attraction acting in its molecules. But kinetic theory says the force of attraction between the molecules are almost zero, negligible. Yes, therefore option B says that gas cannot be liquefied according to kinetic theory of gases. Cannot be liquefied. Next question. The beans are cooked earlier in a pressure cooker. Why? Very nice question. Why in a pressure cooker, the beans, beans you take or you take uh, rice, it gets cooked faster in a pressure cooker rather than keeping it boiling outside open. What is the reason? What happens in pressure? Why it is called pressure cooker? Because pressure is more there. So more is the pressure, greater will be what? Greater will be the boiling point. Yes or no? So if the pressure is more, the boiling point will be more. Understanding? So what is the correct option here? Boiling point increases with increasing the pressure. Boiling point increases with increasing the pressure. Therefore, the beans are cooked earlier in a pressure cooker. Or one more option, example I can give you. If you go to higher altitudes, you will need more, uh, more, uh, uh, more boiling point of water will be more there. That means water will not boil as boil at 100 degrees Celsius. The reason is at higher altitudes, pressure is less. Yes, water will boil quickly there. Boiling point decreases with the decrease in pressure. Understanding? So beans are cooked earlier in a pressure cooker or rice gets cooked earlier in a pressure cooker because boiling point increases with increase in pressure. With increase in pressure. Yes. Next question. A compound exists in the gaseous state both as monomer and dimer A2. The molecular weight of the monomer is 48. In an experiment, 96 grams of the compound was confined in vessel of 33.6 liter and heated to 273 degrees Celsius. Calculate the pressure developed if the compound exists as a dimer to the extent of 50% by weight under the conditions. Very beautiful question. See, a compound exists in gaseous state both as monomer and dimer. Monomer means what? Single molecule. Dimer means combined. Dimer means combined. Molecular weight of monomer is what? 48. Then what will be the molecular weight of dimer? 48 into 2. That is 96. In an experiment, 96 grams of the compound was confined. So 96 grams of the compound was confined in a vessel of what was the uh, volume of the vessel given? 33.6 liters. And it is heated to 273 degrees Celsius. Calculate the pressure developed if compound exists as what? Exists as dimer only. Okay. To the extent of 50% by weight under the conditions. Okay. How do we solve it? See what is given? Weight of the compound is given. Weight of a compound is how much? 96 grams they have said and they have said the compound exists as monomer and dimer and in the question what what the question they have said the question what they have said is 50 percent by weight as a dimer they have said it exists both as monomer and dimer in the beginning they have said 50 percent by weight as a dimer that means what is compound existing as i can say the compound exists as it exists as 50% monomer, 
monomer and 50% dimer correct 50% dimer is that right okay now we will calculate moles of monomer number of moles of monomer is equal to what what is the given mass of monomer 48 grams they have said divided by that is the amount 48 so it is equal to 1 number of moles of dimer so amount is 48 divided by dimer means into 2 so molecular mass is 96 so 1 by 2 is what 0 0.5 so this is number of moles of monomer this is number of moles of dimer what they have asked us to calculate pressure p is equal to so they have said for monomer you have to go into curve so total how much is the kit it is 1.5 into total number of moles right 1.5 into value of r 0 0.0821 into 273 degree celsius they have said so 273 plus 273 I will write it like this, 273 plus 273. Okay. The whole divided by how much volume? 33.6 liters. So, since it is given in liters, I took the value of R as 0.0821. Okay. So, solve it out. 1.5 into 0 0.0821, 273 plus 273 is 546 divided by 336. It comes out to 2 atmosphere. It comes out to to atmosphere so which is the correct option correct option is to atmosphere option c is the correct option is that right okay next question the next question is by what factors by what factor does average velocity of a gaseous molecule increases when the temperature in kelvin is doubled so by what factor average velocity what do we mean by average velocity? Such question, one of the question we had seen. So, average velocity is equal to what? Root of 8RT by M. Correct? Average velocity. And we know that velocity is directly proportional to temperature here. Or I will say root of temperature. Correct? So, V2 by V1. They have said temperature is doubled. So, I can write 2T upon T. Correct? 2T upon T. Solve it out. You will get 1 root 2. Root 2 value is what? Root 2 value is 1.41. It is 1.41. So, what is the correct option? We have solved this question, I guess. It is 1.41. It is 1.41. Next question. The molecular velocities of two gases, the molecular velocities of two gases at same temperatures U1 and U2 and their masses M1 and M2 respectively. Which of the following expressions are correct? Okay. Molecular velocities they have given. Fine. So, here molecular velocity, root means square velocity. So, they have mentioned it as U. So, I will write it as U. U is equal to it is inversely proportional to molecular masses. So, root of what by M1 I can say. Similarly, inversely proportional. U2 will be inversely proportional to root of 1 by M2. Is that right? So, take square of, I will take here as U1 upon U2 will be equal to what? Root of M2 upon M1, M2 upon M1. Or take u1 square upon u2 square. u1 upon u2, the whole square, or u1 square upon u2 square. Squaring this side, root comes out. m2 upon m1. m2 upon m1. So, I will take it in this form format. u1 square into m1 is equal to u2 square into m2. Is this option present? So, u1 square, u1 square, upon yes option d yes d is the correct option u1 square upon into m1 is equal to u2 square upon m2 so option d is the correct option next question let the most probable velocity 
of hydrogen molecules at temperature T degree Celsius be V0. When the temperature is raised to 2T plus 273 degree Celsius, the new RMS velocity, suppose all the molecules dissociate into atoms at the latter temperature. Okay. Root mean square velocity, RMS. Fine. Okay. So root mean square velocity. So I will represent it as V0, they have said. They have said 2RT upon M. Yes, that is equal to root of R into 273 plus T, as they have mentioned. Okay. So VRMS is equal to root of 3 by 2 RT. So what is the value of T? So here I will write it as 2T plus 273 plus 273 into R by 1. R by 1. That is equal to what? Solve it out, you will get 6 T plus 273 into R. That is nothing but root of 6 V naught. Root of 6 V naught. Because V naught is what? RT into 273 R. Yes. So, which is the correct option? Correct option is option B. Root of 6 into V naught. Root of 6 into V naught. That is the correct option. Next question. The correct value of gas constant R is close to. Correct value gas constant R is close to. So 0 0.821 is common. So where we have proper option liter atmosphere per Kelvin per mole. Yes, option B is the correct option. Option B is the correct option. Next question, if 10 raised to minus 4 dm cube of water is introduced into 1 dm cube flask at 300 Kelvin, how many moles of water are in the vapor phase when equilibrium is established? Excellent question, right? Vapor pressure of water is given 3170 pascals and universal gas constant is given. See, so beautiful question it is. So much water is introduced in a given volume. So we know that. PV is equal to NRT. PV is equal to NRT. Okay. Or N is equal to what? PV by RT. PV by RT. What is the pressure they have given? 3170 into 10 raised to minus 3 divided by R value 8.314 into temperature is 300 Kelvin. Right. Solve it out. What answer you get? You will get the answer 1.27 into 10 raised to minus 3. 1.27 into 10 raised to minus 3. So, correct option is option D. Simply PV is equal to NRT you put. You will see uh, how many moles of water are established into the, you will get number of moles. N is equal to PV by RT. N is equal to PV by RT. Okay. A bubble of air is under in underwater at temperature 15 degrees Celsius and pressure 1.5 bar. If bubble rises to the surface where the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and pressure is 1 bar, what will happen? Yes, we have discussed this question. The answer was what we have seen. The volume of the bubble becomes greater by a factor of 1.6. Yes, we have seen this question, right? The volume becomes greater by a factor of 1.6. This question is discussed. Okay. Then next question. Next question is, Air at sea level is dense. This is a practical application of. See how beautifully the application is given for a law. So according to Boyle's law, what we know, density we are discussing. So PV, P is inversely proportional to volume. Sorry, inversely proportional to volume. Yes. So according to Boyle's law, we have seen that density is directly proportional to pressure. Density is directly proportional to pressure. Because we know the equation D is equal to PM upon RT. PM upon RT. This is equation we have seen. So air at sea level, what happens at sea level? Pressure is more. So at sea level, pressure is more. So as pressure is more, density will be what? Density also will be more. Yes or no? 
density also will be more. So what is this? This is the practical application of Boyle's law. This is the practical application of Boyle's law. Is that right? Practical application of Boyle's law. The correct order of viscosity, the correct order of viscosity of the following liquids. So viscosity question, which is the correct order? So what is the correct order? Where viscosity will be more? The correct order is, it is option C. Dimethyl ether is least viscous because it is more volatile. Then comes methyl alcohol. Then comes water and then comes glycerol because we are, viscosity is inversely proportional to volatility. And this is most volatile. So it is least viscous. Yes. Then comes methyl alcohol. Then comes water. Then comes glycerol. Then comes glycerol. Next question. The molecular velocity of any gas. The molecular velocity of any gas is equal to what? So we have seen the velocities of different terms. Yes. Do you remember the velocities? Most probable velocity. Most probable velocity is equal to root of 2RT upon M. Average velocity V bar is equal to root of 8RT upon pi M. And then RMS velocity, root mean square velocity is equal to root of 3RT upon M. So we know that most velocities, yes, molecular velocities is directly proportional to root of temperature. It is directly proportional to the root of temperature. So which is the correct option? The correct option is directly proportional to the square root of temperature. Yes. Next question. Which of the following volume temperature plots represent behavior of one mole represents the behavior of one mole of ideal gas at one atmosphere pressure so which one represents at one atmosphere pressure so volume and option a is so option b option c option d so which is the correct option we know that v1 upon t1 is equal to v2 upon t2 at constant pressure. So they have given us 22.4 liters upon 273 is equal to V2 upon 373. Yes. Solve it out. You will get V2. V2 will be equal to what? 22.4 into 373 upon 270. When you solve it out, you will get the answer 30.6 liters. So which question option is correct? It is option C. 30.6 liters. Yes, they have given it in the form of graph. That's it. Instead of giving the answer. So that is the correct option. Yes. Next question. Match the following. Boyle's law. It is what? Is P inversely proportional to 1 by V. So Boyle's law. A is nothing but V option. Then B. Charles law says what? Charles law says volume is directly proportional to temperature at constant temperature, at constant pressure and number of moles. So B option is correct for fourth one. Then Dalton's law of partial pressure says that the total pressure is equal to sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases. So it is equal to two. Then option D, Avogadro's law says volume is directly proportional to N at constant temperature and pressure. So D is option one. So which one holds true? It is option A. Yes, simple question. So this covers almost all the concepts of states of matter. I hope you have followed with all the questions. Do practice a few more questions for making your concepts clear. Yes, hope you have understood all of them. Thank you.